Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in today's episode we will look at a plant infamous for its ability to die on us, especially when grown indoors. The Calathea lutea. This is an outdoor indoor plant that belongs to the Maranthaceae family. This is also called the Havana cigar plant because this gives out a brown bloom that looks like a cigar. The specimen is one of the taller ones in the Calathea family and can grow up to 3 to 4 meters. The leaves grow like this in the beginning and then unfurl into these pseudo stems and the leaves open up to look like a bent spoon. This is a sought after plant because of these tropical fan like leaves. The undersides of the leaves have this wax coating that probably acts like a sunscreen and sometimes flakes a lot, so don't think that it is some disease and start panicking. And why the underside, you may ask. I think it has to do a lot with how the new leaves come up and then later unfurl, or since the plant stands erect, both the top and the bottom portion is exposed to the sun. Hence, the wax build up. So let's look at some important tips and see how we can stop killing this plant when grown indoors. Sunlight. This plant can grow both indoors and outdoors and it can take both full and part sun. But when grown indoors, it needs very bright sunlight, so grow this very close to the window or the balcony. And preferably in the south or west direction. And if grown outdoors, grow this under some kind of a shade to keep up the lush green colour and prevent the leaves from turning yellow. Watering. Now this is the most defining factor after sunlight. Because this plant hates hard water and I have clearly observed the difference when I kept this in my apartment that gets hard water and when I brought it back to the terrace garden where we get river water and it's not very hard. Hard water burns the edges of the leaves first and then the leaves eventually turn brown and with no leaves the plant may die. So the best thing you can do is use RO water that is more softer or use rain water if you can collect it. Use river water if you get a supply of that but strictly no hard water for this plant. And please water this only when the soil dries but don't let it go dry completely because that would shock the plant too. Fertilizer. This is not a very fertilizer hungry plant and once in a while a mulching of compost would do when in the balcony or outdoors and indoors you can use seaweed solution. Pests. Now this can get infested with white flies or mealybugs so good air circulation and neem oil pesticide can work in controlling their population. And mostly the undersides of the leaves are affected so keep an eye on that. Leaf rupture. So another problem I've noticed about this plant is that the leaf tears if the area you're growing it in is very windy. With torn leaves, the plant can undergo shock and not do so well. So what happened with this plant was that I bought this to grow in my new apartment that is on a higher floor. As soon as I moved it to the balcony, all the leaves tore so badly that I was almost about to lose the plant. But thankfully, I shifted this back to my terrace home and here it is thriving and giving out so many new leaves. Soil media. Please grow this in a well-draining potting mix of 30% sand, 20% compost, 50% garden soil or well-composted cocoa peat. Do not use raw cocoa peat since the compounds in it can burn their leaves. Container size. You can grow this plant in a bigger container if you buy a very tall plant from the nursery. You can also grow this in the ground and it will reach a great height. The root structure is rhizomatous, so the wider the container, you will get more pseudostems. Propagation. You can propagate this by plant division, primarily by dividing the root ball when you have too many leaves on the plant or the plant has outgrown its pot. Do not unnecessarily repot this plant. Shifting. Don't keep shifting the plant and let it settle down. Settling down in one place will help the plant flourish. Pruning. Please prune the dead leaves so that the plant spends its energy on the new shoots. The old leaves can linger on for months together and slow down the plant's growth. So cut it off all the way down like this. So folks, these are some of the major factors I see that you must keep in mind to give your Calathea lutea the chance to loot your heart 
for years to come. And with this, we've come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore and I really hope you enjoyed this particular program. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.